The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. It's pronounced ash hole. You dumb asshole. Excuse me? It's ash hole. You, sir, are an asshole. <laughs> it's ash hole, you idiot. I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. For the last time, it's ash holes. Oh, you were right. I'm just your kind of asshole. It's time, once again, for my kind of ash holes on Unfiltered Cigar Radio. How true that is. <clears throat> Welcome to this week's episode of The Ash Holes, broadcast live from the Serena Royale stage at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. It's time to kick back and light up as we again turn this Wednesday into Ash Wednesday. We are always entertaining, generally unscripted, and totally unfiltered. You can stream and download us on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, and of course at theashholes.net. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Ash Holes and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. And check out unitedpodcastnetwork.tv and subscribe to us there so you don't miss anything. How are we all doing? We got the normal crew here today, yeah. Aaron and Ed. How was your Thanksgiving? We didn't talk about Thanksgiving at all. Yeah, I know. Week. We were all kind of like in the prep <clears throat> mode and burnt out on it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. My, uh brother brought his my nephews up from uh, baltimore so i get to spend some time with them nice so it was good good times cool you do anything ed you have uh, any more of those pies i went over to my sister's house yeah and we had some family there and i was uh, distressed because dinner was later than i like oh and yeah. what time would you like for a thanksgiving dinner i like sort of a one o'clock thing so oh. you can recharge have your leftovers later maybe catch mm -hmm. a nap in the afternoon and they did not serve dinner until about five o'clock Ooh, Ooh yeah is five late. is too much yeah that's that's yeah. late. it's like usually like skip lunch on thanksgiving because you know like for yeah. us it's two o'clock always and yeah because you're, you're gonna you know gorge yourself it was two <laughs> o'clock for us too yeah and we we had the thanksgiving dinner at my house just my uh family the wife and the kids and then uh we made some desserts and headed over to mandy's uh my wife's parents place where, where we met her sister and their three kids and did the dessert thing and played some games and all that stuff. Nice. So it was good. It yeah. was some good time. It was nice to, although I I have to admit, after I ate, I really just wanted to sit. Oh. You, you know, the whole trip to fan thing. You, yeah. You want a nap. You want to stop. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, and so to know that you then had to pack everybody up, go in the car yep. right after dinner and go and entertain and be entertaining was a little bit much yeah i mean my nephews are five and seven so it's like oh. we, we ate and go full on there and then they want to run around it's like oh yeah oh yeah. like they're like be a zombie chase us yeah. like i'll be a zombie but i'll just lay here <laughs> well mandy's sister and her husband also have three girls that are right around the same ages of our three girls mm -hmm. so you had so noise 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 uh, and, <laughs> and uh anna of course brought her dog her oh, service yep. dog with her so it was big hub 12 hub of us that, right? six girls and the dog who was of course a huge hit yep and uh but after about an hour and a half the dog and anna had had enough <laughs> so she wanted to leave and i left with her so in the end that i was guess a i did <laughs> i did get my time at home mm -hmm. lit a fire put it in. man it was cold Oh, oh yeah. man! It yeah. was so cold was on Thanksgiving. Good grief! It was. It barely got to twenty. It felt like winter. It, it was felt like really the dead cold. of winter. Yeah, and it's still fall for another three weeks. Yeah, I mean now it feels normal. Yeah, this is normal. For this a is normal. While. Yeah, a little wet, but yeah, super cold. Oh my goodness! That cold snap was nasty. It was cold outside. <laughs> don't 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 even, even get me started. <laughs> don't even go there. Oh my gosh! Well, today we are smoking Fortello. We are doing the Fortello Navetta Inverso. Mm -hmm. We're doing the Toro size, 
and uh, uh, we have smoked the the uh, Nevada, mm-hmm. which came out last year, late last year, right around Christmas time. Actually, yeah, so pretty close to a year ago. It was, yeah. uh, you know, too late to be considered a, a cigar of the year for Cigar Authority and and all that. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a fantastic cigar, and I yeah. thought that at but at that time I thought that was the best thing that uh, Fratello had put out. And then this year uh, he came out with uh, what he calls the Inverso. And really what that means is that the uh, country of origin for each of the um, the wrapper, the binder, the filler, he inversed them. Yeah. Well, I think they're, they're aren't they all Nicaraguan? No, I guess they're they're Hon- Ecuadorian. No, uh, there's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he just <clears throat> took like the wrapper and put it in the filler? Or? Right, right. So um, it, you know, yeah, on here we have a, a Nicaraguan uh, Habano wrapper, and then the uh, binder is an Ecuadorian Habano, um, and then the the filler is a single farm Nicaraguan Dominican. And uh, on the uh, regular Nevada, it was a uh, Ecuadorian uh, Oscuro wrapper, mm-hmm. and then the uh, Nicaraguan binder. And so he kind of, kind of inverse, sh- shuffled it, yeah. The inverse stuff. And, and it's amazing. So this y- utilizes the very same tobaccos that were in the other one, um, but you get a completely different taste mm. and a completely different uh, experience. I mean, it shows the, the power of the binder and filler and, it, the, and the wrapper, you know? It does. It does. And their Toro is a 6x52. Uh, it's a good size Toro cigar. And um, nice medium brown wrapper. Very nice color, kind of like kind of a flat sheen to it. Yeah, not not a whole lot of oil in it. Nope, nope, and and um, nicely packed. Yes, very and well well made. I mean, the burn line is excellent. Mm-hmm. It's spot on. And the draw, I like. It was a, a nice firm draw, yep. and uh, um, the cold draw. I got lots of hay and barnyard kind of flavors. What did what I didn't really pay have? attention to the cold draw. No. I mean, nowadays it's like, eh, all right, let's just, let's just smoke this. Just thing. move <laughs> on. So what are you picking up now? I mean, what's uh, so right early on that first, like, you know, quarter inch, it was, there was a lot of like citrus notes mm-hmm. uh, along with some earth. Um, since then I'm about, you know, on the first third through, uh, the citrus has died down. Uh, I picked up a little bit of raisin sweetness, mm-hmm. um, but the earth, earth is still there. Um, so it's still going strong. Yeah. Earth, Wood, maybe maybe some hints of coffee notes, dark yep. coffee notes. I got that citrus for sure mm-hmm. initially, and mm-hmm. yeah, I'm getting wood on the retro hail. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Very it, would, good. it would go really well with a cup of coffee, I think. Yeah, this is a great. This could be a great morning cigar, mm-hmm. and um, it, it's not quite as you know uh, full bodied as as. The Nevada. Yeah, I is. feel like that has a bit more oomph to it, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit fuller flavor, um, but it's good. It's got this has some nice nuances so far. So yeah, yeah. So uh, let us go to our top five. Okay. Aloha. Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect ten, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. Now, I'm going to set up this list by saying that Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Mm. I don't know if it's yours. It's up there, yeah. But Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. And the reason for that really is the focus is on thinking about um, what you have, the people in your Mm -hmm. life, the people you've had in your life, um, uh, the things that that you have, the the successes you've had, the lessons you've learned, the food you're thankful for, and, and the food, yes, the and food, the dessert, the and the food, food. <laughs> is also huge. You've got to you got to have the food, mm. and um, you know, unlike other holidays, and and like we're coming up to Christmas, where the focus, of re- you know, at least it practic- it might as well be the focus is on what you want. Mm, and what you yeah. don't have. I mean, it depends on and your what you what you're yeah. going to get. Other people. It, it's and very so commercialized. It's very commercialized. Thanksgiving, not not so much. Macy's Parade is is a thing, but right. That's kind of a joke in itself. So <laughs> yeah, and and um, one of the things that that really messes up Thanksgiving to me 
is the fact that Christmas is already being celebrated yeah, before then. Doing it, you know, Christmas music, anything like that before Thanksgiving is not acceptable. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be after. Yeah. Finish I, the meal at least. Black Friday, <laughs> I totally get it. Switch yeah. gears. I mean, go into in some years, it's a, you know, a short jump to Christmas. So you got to get out there. Right. So, you know, the each year, it seems like the Christmas music is starting earlier in mm-hmm. stores. And this year, it was very noticeable that that uh, that was going on, you know, a week before Thanksgiving. And that really kind of... I mean, I think some stores had things up like the week of Halloween. Yeah. It's like, yeah, some stores you could get Christmas trees way back in September. Yeah, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. And so one of the things that, that happens and... And it, ha- it seems to happen earlier and earlier, and now we are full long into it because anybody who held off is now doing and it. And now you really can't say anything about it. There's right. no right. objection you can make. <laughs> you hear Christmas music in every retail store that you go to, and you're going to hear it until the new year. Whether really. you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. And, you know, there there are, I guess, studies that show that people tend to spend more money when there's Christmas music playing. I mean, how are you going to delineate that? Are there stores that don't have Christmas music playing and they're going to go on based on those sales on a normal Christmas? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. That's I, a tough... To, to, to me, you know, listening to the same doesn't sound very scientific. over and over again <laughs> just it would make people want to run away. Yeah, right. They want to get money. out of that There's place. so many other factors. Gosh, man. Maybe that's it. You just make bad purchase decisions so you can get out yeah. of the store yep. and right. away from the music. Maybe. Yeah. So maybe, so maybe for, this top five is the reason. For whatever reason, they have linked that as a positive thing. And so if as long as possible, as much as possible, they're going to play Christmas music. Now, I don't really have anything... W- bad per se about cr- playing christmas music yeah you know I, it's, it's I, you a know. thing whatever but there are songs that i think are wretched i think a lot of people think they're wretched they there are songs that for whatever reason are seen to be very popular and are played or covered all the time and the top five list this week is the top five most annoying Christmas songs. Hmm. Is this just according to Pastor Padron? This or? is according to Pastor Padron. Okay. This is according to Pastor Padron. And uh, so if there are songs on here that you don't agree with or that you would like mm-hmm. to see on, we can, let's talk about that. Sure. But, at, and, and other than, other than number one, other than the number one thing, these songs are not, they could be, in any kind of order. Any order, yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, number five, uh, this made the top five, is Last Christmas by Wham. Oh, man. Yeah, that that could be a number one in a lot of lists, yes. I think. Yes, and, and because, it could be, a, oh, it's man. a big contender for me. That song has, I believe, several hundred covers oh, I mean, done. I, I, what it makes me think of is uh, an old, like, toy like keyboard that my one of my brothers had and it played it as an autoplay like you can learn to play this song and it's like no that's that's awful it, if it's bad enough to be on a cheap toy it's bad <laughs> right and the and to me the song really isn't even about christmas it's about no it's you know this like romance it's or a something. romance thing this guy you know got his heart broken and now he's and ticked off wham, about he's it. famous and no. You know, let's sing about it. Let's <laughs> let's let's play it at Christmas. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. It does not help them. Although I'm not going to push that too hard because I still think Die Hard's a Christmas movie. So <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't want to trap myself for, for later arguments. That's, that's <laughs> fine. I mean, I can I can see Die Hard. And I see I see Lethal Weapon as a Christmas movie. Lethal Weapon. Which one was that on Christmas? That came out. That came out right around Christmas. The original, is the there, original one, and the opening song the first is, is Jingle Bell Rock. Oh, okay. Into the whole movie. I haven't seen the first one. So in a long when that time. song, I've seen that, the sequels many. When like that three, song, it's always shown. When that song plays, I think Lethal Weapon, hmm. <laughs> and it brings back all sorts of great <laughs> memories. <laughs> <laughs> Puts you, you know. in the holiday spirit. There you go. Oh yeah. Uh, number four. The Chipmunks Christmas song. How Christmas about the Chipmunks any song? I yeah. Mean, really, it's... 
You know, maybe when you're five or six, that actually sounds kind of cute. It's No, it's annoying, and kids like annoying things. But since 1958, that has been playing in every single store all Christmas long. Have you ever and heard... I'm just... The, have you ever heard the unsped up recordings? You can find them out there online. No. Uh, it's very deep voices singing very slow. It's really pretty interesting. Hmm. That's that's horrible. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that was real, the chipmunks? <laughs> no, no. I don't think it sounds anything like chipmunks would sound. <laughs> it's just wretched. I mean, Alvin, Alvin, <laughs> the wretched. chipmunks. Oh, Come on. Gosh, yeah. But that Christmas, and, and all it is is about, you know, they want their stuff. <clears throat> they want their stuff. Well, I'm on my hula hoop. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, no. Please. Just go get some nuts and go away. That's all. That's, yeah. that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Chipmunks, okay. Why can't they be silent monks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Silent, silent chipmunks. <laughs> that, that would actually be funny. Mm. Chipmunks that were monks. Oh. Mm. You're on to something. Chipmunks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Dominic the Donkey by Lou Monty. See, I haven't heard that one in years, so I, I don't know if I can put See, it on the annoying I, list. I haven't heard it this year, but I've heard it last year, but and it, it's just... It's not meant to be like a series of songs. It's not meant to be like, you know, a celebration or anything like... I mean, Last Christmas. It's supposed to be a serious song of some sort. Right. I mean, but Dominic the Donkey is meant to be goofy. It's like Rudolph. Like, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, it's like, it's, it's meant to be kind of goofy. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, but it's, I mean... Uh, I just don't like it. Mm. <laughs> I just don't like it. What do you do? You, what do you think of that pick? Ed? Oh, it's a definite pick. You know, if you hear it one time, it's too many. Mm. Mm. See, I think it's not going to play on a lot of like radio stations unless they're doing it intentionally to be goofy. And they're not throwing it in the mix with other songs. No. You know, no, so I think you're right. It's kind of right. distinct. Uh, number two, another favorite of mine. I say that with tons of sarcasm. Baby, it's cold outside, by Frank Lozier. See that from one, nineteen forty-four. I'm okay with that one. That one's like whatever. It's, it's catchy. It's you know it's uh, done well. It's it's a thing. It's it's all about date rape. Come on. Well, <laughs> come in, on. In hindsight, in, now baby, it's cold with outside. Our, our no, current I need mentality. To go. I need to. No, <laughs> no don't no. go, baby. Yeah. It's cold. Here, nobody, drink this. Look, nobody interpreted it that way come until on. like you know the last twenty years. It was when it well, was made. It was not. It, <laughs> then it's one of these songs that has was, not kept up with the times. It was like it's not, yeah, it's oh, not for sure. timeless. Then now it's yeah. now it's completely irrelevant. Yeah. I, it's. Whenever, I don't think it's a Christmas song. No, I mean it's a winter song. Just jingle bells. Jingle bells isn't a Christmas. Christmas song, but hey, it's it's really just about right. dashing through the snow. So that's any time in New England. In a one-horse open sleigh. Huh? Yeah. There's really nothing Christmassy about it except, oh, people expect to see snow on Christmas. That's yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Number one. The number one most annoying Christmas song, at least to Pastor Padron, is... Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. I am in 100% agreement with that because I've, I've had many conversations about how terrible that song is. And I, I think part of it, too, is just how often and overplayed it's, that song is. You know, I don't right. even know how it became popular. I mean, well, I know because of Paul McCartney, but mm-hmm. other than that, it's really bad. Yeah. But simply having... A wonderful Christmas time, and singing that line over, over and, oh. and oh. over, and the instrumental, the and synth, and over. all that—it's just really oh. obnoxious. Yeah. And what really gets me is it, Paul McCartney's is bad enough, mm-hmm. but then it's again. This is one of these songs that is covered by everybody. We right? need the Chipmunks and to so do a cover of it. If you, you know, on <laughs> on your on your, you know, a lot of us use internet radio now, and and you can basically block songs oh, yeah. you know, whatever so you know i block that song on my christmas list but then the same song will appear sung by somebody else oh so it doesn't and it gets through the filter it, right oh, gosh. right so they won't play that song but they'll play the same thing by another art and it's, it's just it is not wonderful <laughs> no no it just there it is the most unimaginative <laughs> dumb simple 
It was a money grab. Christmas song. It was just, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm going to put out an album. I'll do a Christmas song. Whatever. Well, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Nothing needed written the money, right? <laughs> other stinkers, such as Ebony and Ivory. Is that a Christmas? But, no, oh. but it's a Paul McCartney thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, of course. And it was, again, horrible. Mm. But, uh, you know, I have a... I have a possibility for the worst Christmas song ever written. Now, this one's a little obscure. I don't know if you've okay. heard okay. The Christmas Shoes. The Christmas oh, Shoes. Oh, that hmm. one, yes. Yeah. About the kid buying one. buying shoes for his dying mother. Correct. Mm. Oh, that's another one. Oh, how about all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth? That's pretty annoying. Shh. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it's even it's, sung, the original really, recording, sung kind of really whiny, annoying. too. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, ah, eh, it's not cute. All I want for Christmas mm-hmm. is my two front teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like, please. no, nope, let's, let's put that's, that to rest. That's definitely yeah, but, an honorable mention to me. Aaron, let me read you a little of the lyrics from the Christmas shoes. And, and I want her to look beautiful if Mama meets Jesus tonight. What? Yeah, da- Daddy. <laughs> Wait, it's about her mother dying. Yeah, Daddy told the kid, "You got to go. You got to hurry because because mom's, mom's gonna really die sick. right before Christmas." Yeah, and he Gosh, went to the store that's dark. <laughs> with not enough money to try to buy these Christmas shoes, but the shopkeeper had some sympathy, and I think oh, he sold him the shoes. So, I guess it's a happy ending in yeah. that she had nice shoes when she met Jesus. So, the, so it's got some soul to it. <laughs> it really is a but downer. It's oh a gosh. wicked downer. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very negative. And again, it's... Yeah, wonderful I'm not Christmas. Sure. <clears throat> Your mom's dying. What? Uh, yeah, it ends with, I want her to look beautiful if mama gosh. meets Jesus tonight. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I gotta look that up yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we didn't really care about getting you shoes Ooh. when you were alive, but now that you're on your deathbed, <laughs> let's get her some shoes. Yeah. She died from exposure. She wasn't wearing shoes or anything. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh, it's just so bad, so so bad. Anyway, do you have? Were there any songs that you think I missed? Uh, no, I think they, we pretty much captured it. I mean, wonderful. There might Christmas be some out there, but I they're not popular enough. Is, right. is just one of the most annoying. Isn't ones. there a Cheech and Chong Twelve Days of Christmas? Yeah. It's, it's there's so bad. many takes on the Twelve Days of Christmas. Yeah. It's the only and reason it's okay with me. Like, I mean, it's way over flooded with birds. The song itself. Mm-hmm. I don't know why there's so many birds, but all the like other other takes on the songs are great and they're funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. So now that we've had some time to to smoke. What what else? Where has this cigar gone for you, Aaron? It's actually becoming a little bit richer. Mm-hmm. Um, the citrus is kind of coming back. It's it's really kind of in the background, uh, but the woodiness and earthiness is is still going strong. Um, it's kind of a unique taste, you know. It's not overly you know overly earthy. It's not like you know no. smoking a dirt pile, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's, it's got a nice balance to it. It's very yeah. good it's that it's not smoking like a lot dirt. of yeah, you, know. It, it, you know smooth. It's a yeah. very yeah. smooth smoke. It's I like it. Yeah, it's smooth. It's got this nice creamy aspect to it, um, and those notes of earth and wood. And, yeah. and I'm picking up a nuttiness. Not yet. Maybe you can tell you guys who are listening or watching out there. I have kind of a head cold, so the. The citrus is escaping me. But mm, I'm yeah, thinking, those, those I'm thinking that, that maybe because of my my uh, cold here. Yeah, but it's picking up and then it's body, so that's good. But uh, right now, I'd say this is a medium bodied, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, medium. Yeah. And um, kind of like a medium finish. So. Yeah, yeah, and just a very nice finish. This, and again, I, I would reiterate, having smoked this for about an inch, that this would go fantastic with coffee. Yeah. Or even a sweet, you know, anything sweet would be really yeah, nice with it. Like yeah, a chocolate bar or something like hot that. Hot chocolate. Hot I'm chocolate. Christmas time, yeah. you know. Mm, Christmas time. Ooh, nice. Mm, yeah. Mm. I'm not sure how this would go with key lime pie. N- no, no well, probably not one. Well. Citrus. I don't yeah. Know. Well, yeah. Maybe if maybe. I can taste it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying for uh, mm. another round? <laughs> well, I made a cake for Thanksgiving. You made a cake for Thanksgiving. Yes, a chocolate cake. Was it in the shape of a turkey? No, no. it was pretty standard. I, I made a nice chocolate cake with espresso in the ah, batter. Ah, there you go. Then I cut each of the two in half. Do you make your own frosting, or do you just? Go? I did, yeah. and I, I'm kind of angry with Ina Garten right now. You know the barefoot com- um, contessa. Barefoot contessa, yeah. I, 
was not at all happy with her buttercream mm. frosting. I <laughs> tossed it in the trash. <laughs> wow. And then I had to rush out and get some heavy cream. So I made a, a Kahlua flavored heavy oh, cream, uh, you okay. know, whipped cream. Yeah. Mm. It, it was quite delicious. Sounds pretty good. It sounds great. And yeah. you, uh, it's all gone. Didn't, oh, yeah, of course. It's got to be gone if it's good. It for for us <laughs> well you got you got pie we got pie i'm yes. not committing to a date but there will be a cake <laughs> okay i don't know maybe uh see we don't uh, weasel cigars here we weasel cakes yeah and maybe and sweets <laughs> and, it's like, and alcohol, and alcohol yeah. <laughs> maybe, especially uh, the alcohol yeah. an ash holes birthday celebration or something maybe or, something or like a host that. birthday we'll, we'll figure it we'll out we'll figure something out yeah all right. Well, while we iron out the details of when the cake <laughs> will show up, let's go to our break. And uh, when we come back, we'll give you our continuing thoughts about the Fratello Nevetta Inversatoro. We'll do an ash roll of the week. Sounds and, good. And uh, we'll talk more about the cigar. We'll be right back. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX. The Sereno Royale Maduro XX, named number one cigar of 2016 by the Ashholes Radio Podcast, is a creation of elegance and sophistication. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, the Sereno Royale Maduro XX comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez. Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Serino. To create this masterpiece, a blend of filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a dark and luxurious Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper grown from the famed Habano 2000 seed to bring you an endlessly complex and full-bodied experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allow the blend to marry, creating unmistakable notes of rich cocoa, leather, and coffee that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating the next draw. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available at TwoGuysCigars.com. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head, and value, value, value. There is a Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian, and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five-year-old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well-aged long filler leaves. So, what should you expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional, a flavorful journey into a sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take the journey. Stay tuned for more of the Ash Holes on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solara, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solara becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. When was the last time you experienced something for the first time? Curiosity drives discovery. Discover exceptional tobaccos aged to perfection with Balmoral Inejo XO. Born from passionate curiosity, Balmoral invites you to discover the optimal balance of sophisticated complexity and smoothness. Each meticulously crafted, extensively aged Añejo XO cigar blend is the result of a relentlessly global search for the top 5% of select premium tobaccos available, including our exclusive signature Brazilian Mata Norte. Crowned with a sun-grown Brazilian Arapiaca wrapper, Balmoral Añejo XO embraces your palate with complex notes of cedar, cacao, and peppery spices that finish with a smooth underlying natural sweetness. We invite you to discover and experience Balmoral and Yeho XO today. 
Davidoff Cigars celebrates 50 years of heritage, pioneering, and innovative cigar making in the spirit of the man who gave the company its name, Zeno Davidoff. To mark the 50th anniversary, Davidoff has dressed a selection of five iconic Davidoff cigars with a 50th commemorative white ring for a limited time. One of our best sellers, Anniversario Special R, begins with notes of freshly cut wood, spice, and sweet cream. The aroma is creamy and leathery, with spicy undertones. Experience the exquisite aroma and carefully balanced blend of tobaccos that ensures the most important times are beautifully filled. Available at appointed Davidoff retailers around the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Ashles. You can find us on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, and Spotify. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Ashles and on Instagram at Ashles Radio. We are smoking the Fratello Nevada Inverso Toro, and it is a great medium-bodied cigar. Mm. It's producing some good flavors. It seems to be performing pretty well for us. Yeah, it's going really well. Uh, the second half, I'm enjoying more than the first. Mm. So, and the first half was good. Mm -hmm. Second half's really good. Um, picking up a bit of like a licorice flavor mm. on there. So the, the yeah. citrus kind of melded into a licorice. I really like that. <clears throat> Ed, how about yourself? <laughs> I have no licorice, which I'm happy about since <laughs> I don't care for it. Ah, mm. see, I love licorice. <laughs> maybe I'm blocking it mentally. Yeah, you know? like wonderful <laughs> Christmas time. Just like, <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Simply having a licorice free time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's just, you know, and, and um, I was noticing uh, on the break that the uh, ash was this really nice, lighter gray, very firm mm. uh, ash, and, and the burn line is uh, very thin. It's been burning yeah, great. Really I good, haven't had to nice correct this line, at all. Yeah. And um, I'm not getting a whole lot of changes in the cigar, but a lot of these flavors seem to be deepening as the cigar yes. goes on. Yep. And that is very, very pleasant. Mm. All right. Um, for those of you who are hoping for a Miles with Styles, you're out of luck. Suckers. Suckers. <laughs> <coughs> um, she is currently on a plane headed for Australia where she's going to be doing some more surfing and, and uh, modeling and doing some promotional stuff. And she's also going to be uh, going to a cigar store and giving us a report for next week. But uh, right now, we just have to deal with the fact that she's yeah. in the air. I mean, gosh, if you're, you're traveling to Australia, I mean, you're on the plane for 24 20 or 27 something hours, hours sometimes, yeah, depending on where. Not yeah. a fun, it is not a fun thing. I, I wouldn't volunteer for it. <laughs> yeah. And, it, it, you, know, it, you know, on that point, you know, it's, it's in, on the one hand, it's, you hear about all these places that she's been. And she's, I think she said um, on our anniversary show, or, or Aaron read that she said oh, no, that was on her. the anniversary <laughs> show that uh, she'd been on five continents reporting to the, to the hmm. show. And, uh, you know, she travels an awful lot. And, yeah, she's seen some great places, but I would bet that probably a third of her time over the last year has been spent in transit hmm. to yeah. places. Yeah, I'd imagine, yeah. You know, just uh, most of the week is in the plane mm. and then you get off for a few days do your thing and then you pack everything back up and get on the plane and, and this time of year she's going to be in the southern <coughs> hemisphere so it's right. just a lot of travel time yep yep so we're going to do something that we have uh, kind of put off for a while since there hasn't really been time to do it and that's doing an ash hole of the week nice. <laughs> okay all right and uh my pick for this is a science fiction author his name is andrew duncan you may have heard of him. I had not until this was written, which yeah, may no. say something about how esteemed he actually is. Or he thinks he is. <clears throat> but on he was recently on the um, on this podcast uh, called "The Geek's Guide to the Galaxy," which is produced by Wired Magazine. Okay. And one of the things that he said is that it seems very clear to him that the orcs in the Lord of the Rings series are the, and the way that they are portrayed and treated <clears throat> is racist. 
Okay. And has dire consequences. And orcs dire. are basic- Dire consequences for society. He said, quote, it's hard to miss the repeated notion in token that there are some races that are just worse than others or that some people are just worse than others. And it <laughs> seems to me in the long term, if you embrace this too much, it has dire consequences <laughs> for yourself and for society. So- I don't know the orcs well, but he uh, says some people are worse than others. Yeah. Are the orcs people? They, not really. Uh, they're huh. kind of like monsters. Uh, I mean, if, if you read the well, you books. Don't yeah. say racist things. No. Like the orcs are monsters. Yeah, it wouldn't be a race necessarily. <laughs> I mean, if a it's species, if it, yeah, I mean, Tolkien yeah. wrote all of these and you can, you know, have all the back information. The orcs were essentially created by Satan. <laughs> that's the, the right. But, you know, it's a character that's but the analogy. Of you the, have to treat them the supposed same to be as like Satan, everyone but else. Yeah, even. these are, are monsters yeah. <laughs> created no. to we, destroy we people. We must treat the satanic creatures the same yeah. as all others. <laughs> just hey, just like because <laughs> they're trying to kill you, it's, that's just what they were made to do. You can't hate them for it. If you just tried to understand them, the orcs would <laughs> be very nice. Hmm. They lead you into their subterranean caverns and have yeah. tea with you. Your idea of a, a, a real, you know, a perfect world is peace and prosperity. Well, they want, you know, destruction and darkness, but that's their choice. <laughs> you know, and I totally get that. You know, those themes are important, and that that you know, you don't want to have the idea that when you're speaking about people that some races are worse than yeah. others or some, I mean, you if, know, if some it was, people are worse than others. If it wasn't others. a fantasy book and it was, you know, like the Oompa Loompas, which right. were not originally orange, that was more controversial. But Let's really? forget about yeah. that. Well, yeah. But this, they, they were originally thought, from Africa and they were like pygmies or something. Yeah. It's like, not, not okay. To me, it just says something about how irresponsible we have become in, in being so sensitive to things. If you are now having pangs of sensitivity and, you know, for orcs. Pick a different Something you know, else has gone wrong <laughs> that is perhaps worse than the fear that that might be taken to be racism. It's just insane. And Tolkien himself was very anti-racist. Oh, he yeah. was a very strong proponent, I mean, opponent of the Nazis and, and uh, hated racism. Yeah. Very outspoken about it. From England. I mean, that's... <laughs> if you were English and you didn't hate the Nazis, then, you know. Well, but, yeah. And they were basically, I mean, in his mind, it might have been like the Nazis, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to wipe out all the other races. I don't know. So, Anyways, it's ridiculous. I just don't understand mm-hmm. how some people can just come up with stuff like that. <laughs> it's just... And yeah. try and be... In- and, and, and make it sound like they're no. intelligent, mm. huh. you know. But, just uh, wants the attention. Anyway... He got some attention for sure. Yeah. Hopefully, he'll learn his lesson. <laughs> you know, and I think this kind of proves that he's Tolkien is probably right. There are some people who are worse than. <laughs> 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 let's let's be honest yeah. now. <laughs> oh my goodness! So there we go. The ash hole of the week. That sounds good to me. All right. So we got just a couple minutes left here. What's our final verdict on the Fratello Nevetta? I'm giving it a thumbs up. Thumbs up for you. Yeah. That first half, I may have given it a three quarters, mm-hmm. but it's really proven me wrong. And so I'm really enjoying it. Full thumbs up. Big thumbs up for me, too. I love the Inverso. It's a fantastic cigar. It's a very, very different experience. Mm. Almost the inverse. <laughs> Almost, if you can <laughs> of, call it. Of the inverse. original Nevada. But it's it, it's really, really nice. And the flavor just is building as the cigar is going. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to... I'm really looking forward to that last yeah, it's, third. It's unique honest. from the rest of the Fratello line, so which is right. good. You want you know some yeah. diversity. In and it, so. Fratello makes you know very very good stuff. His mm. stuff is all very balanced and very nuanced. And yeah. Nothing is hit your hit you in your face and, and slap. Anybody you with, can smoke them. They're very approachable. You know, it's, it's you know? a ver- and this is a very approachable cigar. Yeah. So I think with both Nevada lines, he has really, really kind of done it right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for me, I'll go thumbs up. It's not really in my wheelhouse because, mm-hmm. you know, I like the mild and yep. the other end. This is and dead the, medium. This is dead medium, yeah. But it's got a ton of flavor. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's where we are for this week. You have been listening to the Ash Holes Unfiltered Cigar Radio. You can uh, listen to any of our episodes that you may have missed or even share them by going to unitedpodcastnetwork.tv. 
and be sure to hit the subscribe button there so you don't miss anything. And remember to follow us on Twitter at The Ashholes and on Instagram at Ashholes Radio. Next week, we'll be smoking the Placencia Almacapo Sendero. Nice. So I'm looking forward to oh, that. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.